Welcome to this new section of your MyRotic Network Associate course. In this section, we'll talk about bridging. What exactly a bridge and how we are going to implement that functionality in our MyRotic devices. Let's jump into it. When we are talking about the bridge, we are talking about a device that is going to be working at the layer 2 of the OSI model. We know that the layer 2 is going to manage MAC addresses. Basically, that device is going to allow the communication between devices by using the MAC address. That means that those devices must belong to the same network that's equal to the same broadcast domain. We say that that device is a transparent device. And now we are going to understand why that is a transparent device. That basically is going to be used to join two different network segments. So you can see here in the middle, we have that bridge. We have one station here that can be a PC, can be a router, can be a laptop, basically any device that supports Ethernet. And then here we have another device. And those devices are connected to two different interfaces in that bridge. Basically, the idea is that this bridge in the middle is going to join those two separate devices. And now those devices will be able to talk to each other by using the MAC address. So that's the whole point of having a bridge. Every interface is a different collision domain. So we'll explain what exactly a collision domain is and why that is something that will be limited to only one interface in a bridge. And also probably you have heard the term switch. So basically that's a multi-port bridge. So you can see here that the original specification for bridge was a device with two interfaces connecting two network segments. But eventually they has been upgraded and now we have devices that have more than two interfaces and basically that's what we call a switch. So now a switch is a multi-port bridge, no longer two interfaces. We can have switches with eight interfaces, 16, 24, 48, and you can start stacking those devices and you can get a pretty big switch with a lot of interfaces. But first of all, we need to understand how exactly the forwarding process is going to work in one of those bridges. And to do that, we are going to go to the whiteboard. So let's assume that we have different PCs. For example, I have the PC1. Just for the sake of implicity, I'm going to say that the MAC address here is going to be AA. Actually, we're going to have 48 bits, 12 hexadecimal numbers, but I'm just going to use two just to keep this pretty simple. We're going to have another PC. This is going to be PC2, that is BB, the MAC address. And we're going to have another one that is PC3. That is going to have the MAC CC. Those devices will be connected to a bridge. So this is going to be a bridge or switch. So that device is going to have multiple interfaces. And then we have a physical connection from that PC to that interface. Something like that. A bridge is basically going to be performing two functions. So let's see which functions. The first one is learning. Basically, it's going to be learning MAC addresses. The second one, forwarding. Forwarding frames. That means sending frames out of one or more interfaces. So let's say that we have this PC1 here on the left trying to send a frame to a device like PC2, for example. So when this PC is building that frame, the destination MAC is going to be BB because that's the MAC address that we have on PC2. And the source is going to be its own MAC address on the interface where that packet is going to be sent out. So source is going to be AA. And then we have the rest of the packet. So there we are going to have the IP. We are going to have the TCP or UDP information, the application information, whatever that packet is sending to the destination. So now we have that frame 
and then that PC is going to forward that frame to the switch. The switch, every time that is receiving a frame in one of its interfaces, is going to go over those two operations that we have there. The first one, learning, and the second one, forwarding. So you can see that that device has some intelligence built in. And to be able to forward those frames, that device is going to use some internal structures that basically are going to remember where those devices are connected. And that is what we call the MAC address table. So that device internally is going to have a table. And basically, that table is going to have the port, a MAC address, and a timer. Now, that table is empty because this is the first frame that the bridge is receiving. So basically, the switch is going to go with the first process, the learning process. And basically, the learning process is going to check the source MAC in that frame and it's going to add that information to the MAC address table. So in this case, the switch is going to come to the frame, going to say, OK, the source MAC is AA. And that frame came in my interface 1. So basically, we're going to say port 1 has the MAC AA. And by default, the timer is going to be 5 minutes. So that means that after 5 minutes, if there are no more frames coming from the same device, the switch is going to remove that entry. So that entry is going to be dynamic. So basically, that's the learning process. The switch receiving frames, checking the source MAC address, and putting that information into the MAC address table. If the switch already has an entry for that MAC address, it's going to update the information. Probably the port is going to be the same, but now the timer will be reset to the previous value. And that's basically what is going to happen here. So now we have the entry added for the first time with the initial value of 5 minutes. So once that process has been completed, then the switch will go to the next one, and that the forwarding. So where is that frame going to be sent out? And to do that, the switch is going to check the MAC address table. Basically, we're going to look for an entry matching the destination MAC. So in this case, the destination is BB. The switch is going to go to that table. And you're going to see that there is no entry in the table with the MAC address BB. In that case, that frame will be sent out of all the connected interfaces, but the interface where that frame was received. So that means that a copy of that frame will be sent out of that interface and also out of that interface. That frame will travel, will hit PC3. The network interface card of PC3 is going to check the destination MAC. You're going to see, OK, this frame is going to BB, but my MAC is CC. And basically, it's going to drop that frame because the destination MAC is different. But on the other hand, PC2 is also going to receive a copy of the frame, the MAC address matches the MAC address in that interface, because that's BB. And then PC2 is going to continue analyzing the rest of layers in that frame. Basically, going to process that frame. And if a reply is required, then it's going to send the reply to that MAC address AA. So let's assume that PC2 now is replying to that request that came from AA. So PC2 now is going to create a frame where the destination MAC is going to be AA and the source is going to be BB. And then we have the rest of the packet. So that frame will travel, will come to the switch in that interface port number two, 
and then the switch has to repeat the process again. First, learning is going to check the source MAC BB and it's going to go to the MAC address table and I'm going to say, okay, the port 2 has the MAC BB connected and the timer is going to be 5 minutes. Maybe at this time, this is going to be something like 4.59, assuming that that process took one second. And now the switch has completed the learning process and it got to the forwarding. And then for forwarding, the switch is going to check the destination MAC. And I'm going to say, okay, the frame is going to AA. It's going to check the MAC address table. And I'm going to say, okay, AA is connected to the port 1. And now I'm going to send a copy out of the port 1 only. So you can see that in this case, when there is an entry in the MAC address table, that is a unicast message. That means that it's going directly to just one device. If there is no entry for the destination, then that is going to be broadcast. It's going to be sent out of all the interfaces except the interface where that frame was received. And basically, that's the task that a bridge is going to be performing. And that's exactly why we say that this is a transparent device. Because you can see that the bridge never modified the content of the frames. They remain exactly the same. All the decisions are based on the destination MAC, the learning processes using the source MAC, but the switch is not changing, it's not modifying the content in those frames. That's why this is a transparent device. Another concept that we saw in the previous slide was a collision domain. Some years ago, instead of switches, we had a device that was called a hub. So basically a hub is a layer one device. There is no intelligence on that. So if a hub has multiple devices connected to it, every frame that that device is receiving is going to be replicated out of all the interfaces. It's simply going to work as a repeater, sending a copy of those messages out of all the interfaces. And that hub is a single collision domain. That means that only one device can be sending at a time. If we have two devices sending simultaneously, there is going to be a collision. Basically, those devices will have to retransmit. So that's something that is not going to happen with a switch. Because in a switch, every interface is a separate collision domain. And now we have a concept that is called full duplex, where a device can be sending and receiving at the same time. And we can have all the devices in that switch doing the same, and we're not going to have collisions. So that's why a switch is going to offer a pretty high speed. With hubs, the maximum speed that we could reach was 10 megabits per second. Now with switches, we have switches with 1 gig, 10 gigs, 25 gigs, 100 gigs, and even more than that. So that's why a switch is a pretty smart device. It's going to keep track of all the MAC addresses that are connected to the interfaces, and it's going to allow full duplex communication. If we want to create a bridge in Router OS, first of all, we need to create a bridge interface, and then we need to add all the ports into that bridge. And then that bridge interface can be used to assign an IP address, and the devices connected to that bridge will be in the same broadcast domain and can use the IP on the bridge to reach remote networks. We're going to see how to implement, how to create a bridge in Router OS in our very next class. I hope that this class has been informative for you, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.